Welcome to the heat transfer lab. In today's experiment, we are going to measure the laminar and turbulent flow convective heat transfer coefficients. And then we will use these measurements to compare against known empirical expressions. We have here a concentric tube heat exchanger. It is also called as the double pipe heat exchanger. What you see here is the insulation on the outer surface of the outer pipe. The inner pipe is concentric to the outer pipe. There are two types of flows that are possible in a double pipe heat exchanger. In parallel flow type, the inlet of the hot fluid and the cold fluid are on the same side. In the counter flow type, the inlet of the hot fluid is on the same side as the outlet of the cold fluid. In our experiment, we have a counter flow setup. The hot fluid is passed through the inner pipe and the cold fluid is passed through the outer pipe. On this side, we have the inlet of the hot fluid and the outlet of the cold fluid. While on the opposite side, we have the outlet of the hot fluid and the inlet of the cold fluid. Let us now see various other parts of the equipment. This is the hot fluid reservoir. This pump here drives the hot fluid through the inner pipe. The fluid returns back to the reservoir through this circuit. For the cold fluid, we use tap water. We may use a pump on the cold fluid inside as well. When you visit the lab, trace the inlets and outlets of the heat exchanger. The hot fluid reservoir is heated by an electrical coil. We have four temperature measurements two each for the hot fluid and the cold fluid. The thermocouples are placed at the inlet and outlets. This is the display cum controller unit. The readings of the four temperatures are displayed here. These two regulators are used to control the pump speed for the hot and the cold fluid. The flow rate of the cold fluid is measured using this rotameter. For the hot fluid, the flow rate is measured using this measuring cylinder. The reason is rotameters cannot measure low flow rates required for laminar flow. So, we use a large graduated cylinder. The outlet of the cylinder is closed. The hot liquid then fills up the cylinder. The time taken to fill a given volume is noted. This gives us the flow rate. This measurement has to be repeated a few times to obtain the average flow rate and the error in its measurement. Hot and cold fluid rates are two variables we can control to obtain various Reynolds numbers. The other control variable is the inlet temperature of the hot fluid. This is controlled by an on-off thermostat. The desired temperature is first set in the thermostat. The thermostat controls the reservoir's heater coil current. When the inlet temperature of the hot fluid reaches the set point, 
the heater current is turned off. The current is turned on again when the inlet temperature drops from the set point value. The experiments to be performed are very simple. First, we set a desired hot fluid inlet temperature, start the hot fluid and cold fluid circulation pumps, and wait for the system to attain steady state. Note that since hot fluid is circulated back, there is a feedback of a cooler fluid that enters the reservoir. Therefore, it can take a while before we can get a steady temperature. The hot fluid rate must also be measured only after the steady state has been reached. This is because the fluid viscosity can be significantly affected by the changes in the temperature and this can affect the flow rate. The experiments for the turbulent flow is conducted in a slightly different setup. We also have a concentric tube heat exchanger in this setup, though the assembly is slightly different. When you come to the lab, you can follow through the pipe connections to check for the configuration. Since we will be using large flow rates for the turbulent flow, we can use a rotometer to measure the hot fluid flow rate. Other than that, the setup is identical in principle. The procedure to measure the overall heat transfer coefficient is same in the laminar flow setup as well as the turbulent flow setup. Perform the experiments and compare the results with the expected empirical expressions for the Nusselt number as a function of Reynolds number. Have a nice time.